Nicholas says, hey guys, with future tech like blockchain, decentralized tech and AI, where do you see SEO going? Also, what's some creative ways to quickly benefit from iframes to our website? Well, Marco would be the perfect one to answer all of those. Um, and unfortunately, he's not here. Um, Adam, you're you're doing a lot with AI stuff right now. Um, you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I'm just thinking. So with future tech like blockchain, decentralized tech and AI, where do you see SEO going? I don't know. Yeah, I, I can only speak to the side of this. I'll just speak to the stuff I know. I'll let you connect the dots on the SEO side, uh, both Bradley, Chris, and then whoever else is watching. But uh, the, right now where we're at is that this is really helping speed up testing a lot. Um, so like the one I've used is uh, product descriptions. So I went in, um, besides MGYB, I am part owner of another little e-commerce store. And I also help clients with e-commerce, both on the funnel and the, on the email marketing side. Long story short, though, one of the boring things that has a big impact is the product pages, like improving the title of your uh, product, improving the product description, and a little, couple other things on the page there. And writing product descriptions is really friggin' boring, um, but it's really important. And so a lot of these tools now, you can put in a few words about your product and it'll write a great product description. Yeah, like conversion.ai. And so coming in and using that will let you not only get past that hurdle of like either having to hire someone and hoping that they know what the hell they're doing, doing it yourself or not having enough variations. So you can really get to the uh, testing. So I think it was the, I don't have the quote in front of me and I apologize, but they're the CEO or founder of VWO, um, you know, was talking about this and where we're at right now is that this is going to just speed up testing. And so I look at it the same way from an SEO point of view. If you can come up with all of this content that you can test, you no longer have to really come up with it yourself. You just need to know that there's tools available that will allow you to do this. And then the next step is going to be tools that do the testing, integrating this type of stuff where uh, there is a tool I use right now. And I was talking to the founder on a call about some other stuff. And I had said, hey, if you, if you guys played around with these, uh, these writing tools, and he's like, yeah, that's the next step. He's like, you know, our tool helps you uh, speed up the testing process for things on page, like a title or a description or whatever it is. And I said, but now we want to integrate with these tools that do the writing. So you can say, I want to test this title and that's it. It's done. It tests the title for you. It runs through, you know, how many ever options you give it and it does the writing for you. Now I assume there will still be some human interaction, but that, that speed to testing is I think going to be crucial from the SEO side uh, where you're getting uh, traffic to a place, whatever it is, a website, a YouTube channel, and being able to test the, all of these different kind of permutations. Uh, and it's going to become easier both for the little guy to do this testing, but it's going to become, it's kind of more of the same and yet different. These tools will trickle down and be available to someone for free or very low cost. But at the same time, you know, that human time spent maybe monitoring results and seeing what they really mean. That's where the real value is going to be, I think, on a lot of the content side of things. So long story short, uh, we got a lot of cool tools we can use for testing right now. And if you're not aware of them, I would spend half an hour, an hour, just familiarizing yourself with some of these tools. Like Bradley showed one, the conversion.ai and just sign up for a free trial. If they have one, I don't know, but there's tons of tools, copysmith, snazzy.ai, just go see what's capable right now. And I don't think you're going to be like, Oh God, you know, Skynet, the world's ending, but it is impressive to see. And I think it's, you can connect the dots real quick in your head and see where this is going. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, Adam turned me on to this one just about a week ago, actually, um, that I signed up for. I haven't started using it yet, but this is conversion.ai, which I think is good for copy. Uh, phrase.io, this is good for tuning content for search. Um, similar to, I think, what is it? Page Optimizer Pro and Surfer SEO and InLinks and, and that kind of, I mean, this, this was probably more basic than a lot of those other ones, but it's good for optimizing content. And I think that's where a lot of, at least in my opinion, um, you know, Mark is the one that does a lot more with AI stuff. He's, he's more plugged into that stuff than I am, but I think there's going to be a lot of tools to help auto optimize things. Um, you know, we're already seeing the content optimization tools and content product, you know, producing tools or generating tools um, that are using AI. I, but I think, you know, for example, in Google ads, I do a lot of stuff with Google ads. They're using AI and machine learning in, in ads now, like to set up automated bidding strategies, right? You can, you can opt to use 
machine learning and AI and Google ads to auto optimize your ads. And um, I don't do that up front, but once I have proven certain, you know, audiences and ads that are working well, then I will turn on uh, automated bidding strategies or duplicate a campaign, but set that campaign using automated bidding strategies instead of manual bidding um, and, it, and allow it to, you know, I'll split test against my own, my own optimization and ads to what I'm letting Google optimize for me and start to see. And, and more often than not, as long as I have at least proven a good ads campaign with a proper audience, then when I, once I move that over to test uh, automating bidding strategies in Google, more often than not, so more than half the time, Google's AI and, you know, um, automated bidding strategies end up outperforming what I was able to do on my own. So it's, it's been great because it's been able to improve like where I've been, I've been able to get my ads to a certain spot. And then once I get them to that point, I put it into Google, um, you know, let Google take over. And it, like I said, more often than not, so more than half the time, uh, it ends up out, outperforming what I was able to do on my own. So not always the case, but more often than not. So um, I see that as something else that could be potentially coming into um, more SEO stuff as well would be like auto optimizing website, right? For example, for example, like conversion optimization, I can see sometime in the near future that pages will auto like, you know, split test pages on their own and change elements of the page and layouts of the page and things like that to determine which are the highest converting rates, like which, which, um, to, to optimize for conversions. And I could see that as something that's coming, right? So that we could- It's take already it. out, man. <laughs> is it? Yeah. Yeah, but it's gonna become the status quo, you know, in the next few years, I think that that, cause right now it's like, if I had a WordPress website, I agree, I know it's out there, Chris, but it'd be like, where do I, how do I do that? Where do I do that? Yeah, I mean, like make it mainstream. <laughs> I'm using a mainstream tool, but I'm not allowed to talk about it. So, um. well, it can't be mainstream if you're not, if you're not allowed to talk about it. Then, <laughs> well, I had to send mainstream an mainstream tool, That's... but I can't tell anybody. <laughs> I think. That... Well, I, I can share it in Semantic Mastery, but like as I said, like I cannot say yeah. anything on the public. Thing. Well, there's some, Bradley. I'm glad you brought up phrase. I think that is the other side right now where you can get a lot of mileage out of this. Where let, instead of you writing the content brief that, you know, uh, this also goes back to the process. And since parts of this are being automated now, like you can go into phrase, type in a keyword and have it auto generate a content brief for you. Mm -hmm. And is it going to be perfect uh, to me? No, but it's a start and it's a process, which, I mean, I'm guilty of this too, where it's like, oh, I need an article for this. Well, I'll just kind of outline it. And inevitably I'm not doing the same thing each time. So like these tools to me really help Pay, you know, if I have to hand it off, I can say, okay, here's the process. You go in here, you click these buttons, you do a manual review, take this stuff out and then hand it off to a writer, for example, instead of just being like, okay, well, this is the article I'm looking for this time, you know? So I think those tools, like you said, Bradley, are going to be come even better and they're already pretty freaking good. Yeah. And that, that's a good point that you made about that. Cause you know, I still order a lot of content from writers and sometimes I'll need a piece of content for something. And <clears throat> you know, I'll be staring at the order submission screen and like, I draw a blank, like what the hell should I, you know, how do I describe what I need? And so what he just said about a content brief is, is, is a good point because I can go to phrase now and type in a query or put in a keyword or something and hit go and it will spit out a content brief and that'll like seed the idea for the content that I need um, as opposed to me having to come up with something. So it does definitely save time. And that's, that's kind of where I see things going. Um, with AI.